hey, you found us on YouTube. What you're about to hear is a bonus episode about what happens when Misty gets her own shift on the radio station. Within the continuity, this fits between episodes three and four, though it really shouldn't matter too much to the plot of the year if you listen to it out of bad order. Welcome to Fairmont is a WKT production produced by us, Alana Orion and Colleen Fries. This episode is performed by our good friend McKenna Kramer as Misty. Thanks for listening, and enjoy. Do you hear, like, phones ringing out there? Yeah, we should probably go get that. Yeah. Misty. You might know me from other times I've been on air, but I know you because I know your story. This is a story about you. You've probably been listening to this station for years. In fact, you're almost certain you have, though sometimes it's hard for you to tell since the merge has been so weird for you. You know it's been weird for everyone else too, though it's hard to figure out why. You can't exactly read their minds or anything, but sometimes you think you can read their faces. A glance out the classroom window into a world they can probably remember. A wince as they walk out the door, as if they're expecting to be walking right back in it again. You're almost certain that you do the same, though it's hard to catch yourself doing it. You've spent nearly countless years of your life with the same routine. You wake up in the morning at your home. You always have memories of the weekend intact until you do this, but sometimes you forget what day it is until you look at the calendar you have tacked to your fridge. On those mornings, which is practically every morning, you get up, get dressed, brush your teeth, and eat breakfast. Those things don't always come in that order. Sometimes they're entirely reversed. But no matter what order those first four things come in, the fifth thing you do is go to school. It used to be that you would walk through the door and the memory of the weekend, already dissolving as memories do, would disappear entirely. You would forget the morning. You would forget that one memory you still have from being three. That one, of course, is more of a still image and an impression, really, but you treasure it all the same. But as soon as you'd walk through the door, you'd stop treasuring it because it's no longer there. It would be another day at school, just like any you remember before, and all that you assume will come after. Home used to be nothing more than a concept, the place you must go when you leave at the end of the day, because there's no other logical answer. It just was. Since you were thinking about it, the last you could recall was walking out those doors. That had been Friday. You had spent your weekend. You hoped you'd enjoyed it. But that day was Monday, and you would have walked out the doors at the end of it. And then you came in again. You hoped you'd slept last night. Now, of course, you know. You were crossing a memory line. Time, as strange a concept as it already is, was acting even stranger. But you suppose that doesn't matter much now since the memory line is gone and your days have come to a new consistency that involves remembering your dreams while you're dozing off in math class. Not that your teacher will notice. He is just a psychic link after all. His physical self, like most of the teachers at the school, is probably off somewhere doing something totally unrelated. You hope he's having fun doing whatever it is, but you have no way to know and it doesn't concern you in the slightest. Nowadays, you like listening to the radio after school. On this particular day, something different is on. You're not really paying attention, but you think it's nice to hear a different voice. It's saying something about hearing a different voice, you notice, and that freaks you out a little bit. A stray thought crosses your mind as you try to focus back on your homework. I don't like the word bounce, it says. You don't know this, but you don't like the word because it reminds you of the memory line and all the times you've bounced back out of it because of the faster progression of time inside the school. You, of course, don't know that, but you cringed when you heard the word anyway. The similarities between what you're hearing on the radio and what's going through your mind are creeping you out. So you decide to turn it off and therefore miss the new voice on it changing the subject and saying, I find your story really boring, but I also enjoy just creeping you out. You know you'll remember everything you heard on here in a dream tonight. 
And if you think you're creeped down now, just wait till you're dozing off in math class tomorrow. You're not going to be getting any good sleep for a week. I'd guess that the other listeners right now are wondering, why is Misty narrating the day of some random student? And the answer is that I'm just doing it because I can. I'm also going to use this opportunity to make sure that you all know that I'm going to mess with the flavor of your lunches one day next week, but I'm not going to tell you when or how. Enjoy that anticipation, kids. You'll never know what inspires me to act, but you'll always find out when I do. You know, sometimes I miss the large day. You know that one that happened last year? I really liked having more of me around. It's hard to find people you understand and identify with, you know? And being the school's oracle, I can't very well leave, which severely reduces my chance of meeting other people like me. But I guess you're not here to listen to a story about me today, are you? Because this is a story about you, and I should get back to it since you're about to turn on your radio. You flip the switch just in time to hear it, but this time decide to leave it on. There is something comforting in the words of the stranger on air, even if they were probably stalking you. You do hear them say that they aren't, in fact, stalking you. They just know what you're doing. They know all about you because this is your story. While you had the radio off, you completed your math homework and moved on to your English stuff. Then you forgot about your science until you heard it on the radio. You smack your own forehead in that mundanely human act of forgetfulness. It stung a little bit, and you vaguely wish for a moment that you weren't human and therefore didn't feel the need to act mundanely like one. But you finish your English homework and start on your science. You get about halfway through it when the thought strikes you that school became a lot easier when you could actually remember that you had homework to do, even though you still forget it sometimes. Forgetting it now has nothing to do with leaving the school. It is simple human nature, acting against you once again. You again resent that you're mundanely human, but there's nothing you can do about it, so you turn your attention back to your assignment. You continue to have a lot of intrusive thoughts as you go through the questions, but a lot of them are frustrated in nature and don't comply with the FCC laws regarding use of language, so you don't hear them out loud. No one does. You tune out the radio again as your attention is dragged into the last question on your homework. This is a shame for you, since the answer you need is just 42. But you don't hear that and continue to work out the problem the long way. You also don't hear that the show is ending in a matter of minutes. In fact, you aren't going to hear anything else I say for the last bit of this broadcast, so I'm done telling you your story. You need to get a life, because now I've wasted some of mine sharing yours. Anyway, I'm Misty, and this has been a story about you. I can't wait to hear what horrors you think of in math class in the next couple of days as you think about this again. Thanks, I guess, for tuning in with me. I doubt it'll happen again. Happy nightmares. In fact, here next week, tune in with us on the radio on March 30th for the fourth episode. Um, and my internal screaming at being a legal adult. Anyway, thanks for listening. Happy nightmares. God knows that this is one.